So you've mastered cable management, but what about password management? If your passwords are easy enough to remember, they're definitely not safe enough. And if you make them super complex, well, then you have to write them down somewhere and desperately hope you have access to them when you need them. Needless to say, all the methods of password management I've tried in the past either compromise security or convenience, which is why Dashlane is the perfect solution I've been looking for. The service's password generator lets you create passwords up to 40 characters long with your choice to include digits, letters, symbols, or all of the above. Not only do the passwords get backed up securely to Dashlane's database, but they autofill anytime you're at a login screen, so logins become insanely fast with zero headache. The app is also supported on all major platforms, so you can use and manage passwords from your desktop, your smartphone, and countless other devices. I've been so impressed by the service so far that I'm actually going to keep using it long after producing this well-made advertisement. Dashlane is free to try, so there's no risk in giving it a whirl. You can check it out now in the description below, and if you're subscribed to my channel, you can use the code YouTube2018 to get 10% off Dashlane Premium, which opens up even more features like syncing up your passwords across all of your devices. Make logging in great again with Dashlane. What's going on guys? Welcome back to the channel. Today we're going to be exploring the topic of whether or not you actually need a graphics card to game on a PC. Now, of course, having a discrete card is going to help you tremendously if you're trying to hit super high frame rates and uh, you want that buttery smooth experience and you, you've got enough cash to do so. But since the graphics card market is what it is right now, with prices being still more or less inflated, um, and we have these new Ryzen APUs on hand that are actually the fastest on the market right now, uh, it begs the question, do you actually need a graphics card to game comfortably? And what kind of performance can you get away with if you're fully pimping out a system that only has an APU with integrated graphics. So today we're going to be exploring that topic with uh, with a number of games that I've picked out, some that are less demanding, some that are more demanding, and we're going to be using this as our sort of uh, testing subject, which is the mini PC that I built uh, in the part one video. You should check that out if you haven't yet inside the Inwin Chopin uh, using a Ryzen 5 2400G, which is a four core, eight thread part. Um, and uh, not much has really changed. You can see that I did make the modification. If you haven't seen the part one, I did modify the case, cut out some of the so that we can fit a larger Wraith Spire cooler, as this case is pretty limited on its Z clearance for CPU coolers. Uh, we wouldn't really be able to get away with much overclocking at all. Fortunately, I was able to clock both the CPU and GPU portions of the chip, which we're also going to talk about momentarily. Um, so let's let's talk about that now, actually. Uh, we have, again, the 2400G with a uh, current overclock on all four cores to 3.7 gigahertz. Now, that's actually fairly low. Most people have been able to get away with 3.9 gigahertz without really even messing with the voltage much. Um, but when I was trying that, even going to 3.8 gigahertz, I kept crashing in Fortnite. That was the one game I kept going back to to test with, and I would just crash out every single time until dialing it back to 3.7 gigahertz. So while it's only a 100 megahertz bump uh, on all cores over our max turbo frequency on this chip, um, it is running rock solid stable. And uh, to be honest, I was more concerned about overclocking the graphics uh, side of things, which we do have a Vega 11 graphics chip built into that APU, of course, um, with 11 cores. And the uh, stock speed uh, of that chip is, uh, I believe it's 1250 megahertz. I was actually able to bump that up to 1325. And, and actually in practice, it's more like 1,319. You'll see that on, on the GPU-Z later on. When it comes to memory, um, I actually had, that's the one modification I had to make to this system since the last video was I had to take out the G-Skill Ripjaws 5 kit because it just wasn't cutting it. Uh, for whatever reason, I couldn't post at the rated 3200 megahertz speed. I couldn't even get away with 3000, to be honest. So I swapped these out for some, uh, you know, arguably higher quality RGB, uh, Trident Z RGB sticks from also from G-Skill and was easily able to, to post at 3200 speed on the first try. Now, going back to the Fortnite testing, um, I kept crashing in Fortnite at that speed. So I had to dial back the memory speed to 3000, and now we're sitting pretty at 3000 megahertz. So uh, for whatever reason, Fortnite's being kind of finicky right now, and I'm not exactly sure why, but 3.7 gigahertz on the CPU, 1325 megahertz on the GPU, and 3000 megahertz on our memory. So that's kind of what we're working with right now. And uh, I think right now we can just j jump into some games and kind of just see what performance we're getting. So I'm gonna start off with Fortnite since I've already been talking it up um, and we'll, we'll just jump in and see what happens. All right, so running around here uh, outside, out in the wild, you can see we're getting around 40 to 50 FPS. We're in the 40s range. 
which is actually pretty good. And if you're curious about our settings, let me just stand here in the open so people can shoot me. Uh, running at medium settings with the exception of anti-aliasing, that's running at high, because uh, medium anti-aliasing in this game looks like poop. But you know what, even at medium settings, Fortnite looks pretty darn good at 1920 by 1080. Uh, you can also notice that we're using about six and a half gigs of system memory right now. Um, now, remember I had to make that memory switch the last minute, so we're actually using a, a really overkill kit of Trident Z. There's actually 32 gigs of memory in here right now, um, which is not necessary, um, but at the very least, I would recommend at least 16 gigs if you're gonna uh, run a similar operation to this one because we barely have, you know, if, if we only had eight gigs in there, that's not enough overhead. It's very little ceiling room uh, for additional applications running in the background while you're gaming, um, such as, you know, Discord or Twitter and so forth. So um, also we've got, uh, let's see, we're eating up our full two gigs of VRAM right now. I've made sure to enable uh, two gigs supported frame buffer in the UEFI. Memory is also running at 1500 megahertz and GPU once again, 1320 megahertz thereabouts. CPU is about 30% utilization, not too shabby. And if you look at our temperatures, I'm not sure if you can see it, but we are right now at 73 degrees Celsius on the package. Uh, so that's, that's actually pretty good. You know, our mod is coming in handy, cutting out that piece of mesh and uh, allowing us to fit a bigger uh, stock cooler in there is really doing some favors right now, especially considering that we're, we're overclocked uh, as much as we can be. Oh, and that's a whole group of people I'm about to, eh, okay, all right. You know, I was trying to make a video, guys, and you just had to ruin it. Not salty at all. I guess we should move on to the next game. Prepare your defenses. We're in Overwatch now. I'm Junkrat because it's the easiest character to play when you're not really playing. We're playing at high settings right now, the high preset. You can see we're getting uh, over 60 FPS right now. We were getting well over 60, almost 100 when we were in, in smaller places, like more confined spaces. And now that we're out in the open and there's a lot of, a lot of things happening on screen, uh, we're dipping to around 60, but still very, very playable. Thank you, Mercy. Um, look at our GPU clock speed. It's very consistent, just locked in to 1,319 megahertz. Uh, still using about six and a half gigs of system memory. So again, you're gonna want more than eight. CPU usage still seems to be around 30. It looks like we're using more CPU. Definitely more CPU is uh, is eaten up in Overwatch than it is in Fortnite, almost hitting 50%. I would show you the uh, CPU temperatures, but um, Afterburner doesn't actually read the CPU temps for these Ryzen APUs right now, at least from, from what I can tell. There's, there's no, actually no option within Afterburner to uh, bring up CPU temp on the OSD. But um, I can double check for you really quick. Okay, 74 degrees C, about the same as what we were getting in Fortnite, so definitely manageable. Okay, so clearly the system is Overwatch approved. You, you are good to run Overwatch at 1920 by 1080 at high settings, without a doubt, uh, without a graphics card. Spam, spam, spam. Oh! I got junk ratted. My junk rat got junk ratted. It's time to move on. All right, we're playing Doom. And uh, I hear someone. Hey, buddy. What are you doing over here? I'll give you a hand. <laughs> Get it? <laughs> All right. Um, so we're, we're running it with Vulcan right now, the Vulcan API. A um, bit more optimized for AMD hardware than the old OpenGL 4.5. So right now we're hovering in the 40s. Uh, in terms of frames per second, and that's pretty much where we were in Fortnite. And the game is just as smooth um, as, as Fortnite was. You can see here, if, uh, if I go into our settings, that we are running on the low preset. So we're running at low settings, venturing somewhat into console territory, but the game still looks great at 1920 by 1080. You can see right there. We are in windowed mode, so things look a little bit shrunken down, but uh, all looks good and it's it's very smooth. Again, nothing earth shattering here, guys, but very, very playable if, uh, if you happen to be on a budget and can't afford a graphics card. It's kind of surprising that we're actually eating up less VRAM in this game than we were in Fortnite. CPU usage is close to 50% and uh, we are using a bit more system memory here at seven gigs. I'm not seeing any more enemies, guys. I think I killed them all, so... Since there's no one to kill me, I guess I'll just voluntarily move on to the next game. But you know what? I'm gonna give Doom a pass. Doom gets a solid pass for being uh, very enjoyable at the current settings. Hell yeah. Get it? Cause Doom, you're in hell? <laughs> Here we are in GTA 5, perusing the streets of Los Santos. 60 to 70 FPS in the city, no less. 
actually getting turned on right now. Let's let's take a look at our settings. We're, we're at 1920 by 1080, and it looks like, okay, MSAA is off, obviously. Uh, you guys know by now how much that tanks performance in this title. V-Sync's off, v, uh, FXAA is disabled. Um, pretty much rocking like normal to bare minimum specs. So again, uh, nothing uh, super eye candy inducing, but I don't know, maybe it's just because I'm in windowed mode. It, it, it still looks really good. I'm just curious. I forget if this is one of those games where performance matters if you're windowed or full screen, and apparently not. And obviously when you full screen on a 32 inch 4K uh, screen like this one, um, things don't look quite as nice. But uh, that being said, if eye candy isn't your priority and if you're ditching a discrete GPU altogether, it shouldn't be, then GTA 5, very passable very playable stop throwing things at me i will kill you um so now we're we're getting uh as you guys might assume even higher frame rates in the sky because we're we're looking at clouds and stuff that uh, that don't really need as much rendering as the very dense uh big city here so oh don't don't crash into that building no that's never good so things are looking pretty good so far and uh i would say there's even headroom here to crank the settings up a bit so wait, how do you pull the, oh yeah, that's right. I tried this earlier and failed miserably. So let's, let's, let's see if I can do this again. You actually have to break. This isn't, this isn't PUBG or Fortnite. You actually have to do an air break. <coughs> let's move on to the next game. Our last game of the day is Battlefield 1. Let's take a look at our settings here. 1920 by 1080, V-Sync is off, and we're running at the low preset. Now I did try medium earlier, and uh, performance was subpar, it was getting in the 30s. And when you're in the 30s on average, it typically means that you're dipping into the 20s here and there, and that's when things get really choppy, visibly. So, uh, so I, I bumped it down to low, and to be honest, the, the quality difference isn't that much different perceptibly to me anyway, going from medium to low in this game, but it is a huge performance impact uh, going from low to medium. So um, so I'm gonna take low. I'll take low any day of the week for smoother gameplay. What are we at here? Looks like uh, only five and a half gigs of system memory at the moment are being used. Eating up 1.8 gigabytes of VRAM, 65, 60 to 65 uh, percentage uh, CPU utilization. Definitely a CPU heavy game, Battlefield 1. Kill me. Okay, I died. But summing things up here, I think it's definitely possible to game without a graphics card right now. If you have something like this Ryzen APU with Vega graphics, whether it be a, a 2400G or even the Ryzen 3 2200G, I think you're good to go. I mean, obviously there's a couple things to keep in mind. You wanna have decent cooling, uh, especially if you wanna take full advantage of this chip by overclocking both the CPU and the GPU that's built in, uh, pairing it with fast memory. Ryzen feeds off of fast memory, that's super important. And also don't get this case, because even if you're gonna game without a discrete GPU for six months to a year, uh, you wanna have the option to eventually pop in a discrete card when you're ready, when you can afford it, once the prices come back down to uh, sane and reasonable levels, um, then you wanna have a case that actually has expansion slots and can accommodate that discrete video card, because this one clearly does not. And finally, you know, I think you have to be realistic when approaching uh, building a system like this. Like, is this rig gonna give you the smoothest, silkiest, and most beautiful image and gaming experience you've ever seen? No, it's definitely not, and far from it, you know, but from, from what I could tell today, it was definitely adequate. It was playable and it was comfortable, and I wasn't getting taken out of the game from how low the performance was. It, it was definitely good enough, and I think anyone going in with those realistic expectations, building a system similarly specced as this one, uh, is not gonna be disappointed. But that's all I got for now, guys. Let me know what you think in the comments below. Toss a like on the video, get subscribed for more tech stuff coming at you really soon, and you can also check me out on Floatplane if you wanna watch my videos a week early without ads for three bucks a month. I'll put a link for that in the video description. Till next time, guys, thank you so much for tuning in. Have yourselves a good one, and I'll see y'all in the next video.